About five years ago, our church eldership or the board started to look at the possibility, what will the next season of Hungry Gen look like? Unfortunately, not a lot of churches are for sale and a lot of other places that were, were for sale, they were not very good. And so for many years, we were looking at it, looking at it. And then what took place is that in, on June 25th, 2021, so that's about a year and a half ago, we purchased a building in Kenwick for $3.127 million. And this is that place. It's off of Edison and Canal Drive. And so this is the place where it's going to be the future home of Hungry Generation. It used to be, uh, I think, a skating arena and then it became a welfare place. The beautiful part about this place is it does not have supporting beams in the, sanctuary, in the building. It's pretty much just a clear open box which allows us to do whatever we want to do there for the glory of God. So it's really close to Kamaiken. It's really close on Edison Street. There's a potential uh, bridge being built from Edison to Pasco potentially um, it's in works and so this is the building that we have purchased the problem the good thing with this building is that we can have more people there but the parking lot as you can see is very small so we were presented with a problem and that is we can't expand fully there unless we have parking lot the next to the building a land was for sale we purchased the land a year or that year for a million two hundred forty hundred thousand dollars. So this is pretty much how it looks is this is the building that we have purchased and then next to this building we purchased the land. The land came also with a parcel for a triplex and we felt that it would be very good to have an exit on both sides on Edison because Edison is very busy and Canal is busy and so that we can have exit and entrance on both sides so that we can have a large parking lot and so that we can have a housing in the future for internship. The two fourplexes right here the owner was already willing to sell them to us but he went back on it which is good because we don't have the money and so but they will be available probably in the future and we'll be able to by God's grace this is kind of a dream don't tell this to the Alvarez guy yet yet but we're gonna buy out these fourplexes we're gonna buy all of this out and have a new sanctuary that will seat about 2,000 to or to 4,000 people right here the city will pay for the bridge to Pasco and then Hungry Gen will be in the center of what is happening in our region. So that's the future. And also we'll buy also this thing behind, but just please don't tell them that yet and stuff. This is, I'm just letting you know. Um, but for now, this is where we're at and this is giving, gives us enough space and enough time to, um, to do this thing for our church. Now, here is how it's going to look. As you see, a parking lot, a house that will be here in the future, the church and the playground for kids. This is the aerial view of the facility. The sanctuary will have an, a rise of like bleachers type looking so that it will give a really good view for people who are sitting in the back instead of only looking at the screens. The colors will be different. This is just an example of what this will look like. The sanctuary will seat about 900 people, which is a very large increase from 200. We, we can technically only sit 198 or 99 people here. So this will give us a really um, large opportunity for that. We will be able to have 400 children in one service in the kids zone because we'll be able to have 18 classes for children and about 16 offices at the same time. Our challenge with this building plan was not only to create a plan where we can seat as many people as possible but where we can have a spacious lobby where we can have also a hangout place with coffee shop and also where we can have enough space for children on Sunday morning as our church is growing more people are having children which is children are blessing from the Lord and so we want to have a lot, a lot of uh, space for children but we also want to prepare everything in such a way that we can build a private school there as well. 
So we were in consult, consultation with churches that have schools and in consultation with people who, know, who do this for a living and they advised us, it took us a long time to finally make a plan where everything is already going to be pre-plumbed and made where a private school can happen with the switch. Everything is there already. The playground, the classes, everything is set up for a private school. If the Lord gives us the finances, we'll be able to launch the private school as soon as we move in. Until then, we're just going to have everything ready. So that's why it took us so much time to develop all these plans because we didn't want to develop a plan for church. And then two years down the road, as we see the woke agenda is really advancing in schools. And then we're like, oh, we want to do a school. And then we have to redo the whole thing again and trying to redo a construction. So we wanted to do it one time and do it right instead of redoing it later on. So this is the first floor as you are seeing. Um, this is going to be the sanctuary. The entrance, there will be two entrances. One is for the main entrance for the church and then the second entrance is going to be for the children. This will be the check-in area. It's, it's going to be pretty spacious and then the toddler's room, the nursery rooms and then parents will be able to drop off their children and actually go into the common area or into the coffee shop straight through the building or they can go from the outside. We will have two uh, floors in there which is one of the reasons we're raising the roof and I'm going to mention to you in a second is that because this space is not really big we wanted to optimize it for our classes and in order to do that we had to find a way to fit a lot of classes in a small space without sacrificing the sanctuary spacing. So the main floor, as you see, will have six classrooms, two offices, two multi-purpose rooms. What I'm excited about is not only the really nice spacious lobby, but we will have a large multi-purpose room that almost could, be, uh, could fit about the same amount as we have right here in the sanctuary. So we'll be able to have two of these rooms, one in here and one on the second floor for internship, where we have almost like two, two small sanctuaries that we will have straight within that building, in, not including the rest of the 18 classes. So we will have a lot of space to do a lot of good stuff. Come on somebody. How many of you are excited? Now, this is not how this is going to look. We will not have these fans, I can guarantee you that. And these colors. This is just to kind of give you uh, a baseline of how this will look. It will be extremely spacious, 19 feet. So about from here to, uh, to the ceiling over there. Uh, it's going to be very spacious. There will be three entrances inside. There will be a coffee shop and then we will have a hangout area in there. If you go upstairs, you can go into the internship or a multi-purpose room that is going to be there. This is going to be media overseeing into the sanctuary so they can see what's happening out there. The sanctuary as you have seen will have um, we will be able to enter in there will be the the room for the mothers with children right there and then we will have a really nice uh, kitchen for that as well and a seating like a balcony uh, seating on both sides this is the view from the stage this is going to be the view from the back into the stage now we will have rooms on both sides, we'll call them green rooms where people who are ministering or who are preparing to preach will be on both sides, either worship team on one side and ministers on the other side. We will have a second story also for some storage. We are developing some underground tunnels under the stage, secret passages and so we will do some secret stuff like hiding wires and I'm just kidding. And then we will have a water baptism right here where we pretty much instead of going in there it will just open up, you'll go get baptized we close it down and and the service will continue and the incredible part is the dream that I've always had and failed at it for the last 19 years will finally be able to bring a car from the back straight into the stage a Porsche or a Tesla I don't know and so we will have enough space in here where we can actually bring whatever production that we need to do on the stage um, whatever that we choose to do as a ministry right now like we're so limited with these tiny doors but we'll be able to do very large productions if we need to we can bring camels if we want to on Christmas so we can finally do what what we can without um, the limitations amen <laughs> really excited for that I can only imagine the creative ideas the Lord will give me <laughs> Upper floor, the second floor will have classes as I mentioned and also it will have offices um, on the second floor. Now one of the challenges that we have with this building and that is this, is that we cannot, 
we cannot raise the roof uh, from the ground till about the ceilings 19 and a half to about 20 feet the foundation of the building is not strong enough to raise the roof and beams of the building are so low because these beams are so heavy they carry so much weight therefore the building doesn't have support system so the beams are five feet into the ceiling that you can look at and we can't raise the roof which means that we're limited with the amount of classrooms we can have or the amount of people that we can fit in the sanctuary and so we honestly toiled and work with the city with engineers what can we do and so we found a nice loophole around it is actually to take these five feet beams that hold the building and instead of raising the roof to lift these beams up so it frees up extra five feet it doesn't seem a lot but it actually becomes a lot when it sits freed up what that allowed for us to create a second floor for the kids zone and what it allowed for us is to create just a wider spacing in the sanctuary so now the challenge is of course to create that we got the permits and in fact as we speak in this week or next week the first beam is going to be going up and so there will be these brackets which um, our team really worked very hard Paul and the team to save a lot of money on these brackets so these brackets will hold these beams so if you're seeing that these this large beam is going to be elevated small beams connected to it are held back right now until this beam goes up and then the small beams will be connected through the new brackets to this large beam freeing up more space and creating room for second floor for kids zone without us putting more weight on the foundation on the outside this is that beam it's covered right now with the with the facial what's going to be happening is that these beams will stick out five feet the brackets will hold them and then we will create a cover all around so our building will look taller even more taller on the outside as well as you're seeing it's happening right now so this is how the building looks from within we got all of these things supporting the small beams because as we lift the tall beams so that the building doesn't collapse and then we are going to attach the small beams to the large beam as well and thus we're going to free up extra five feet the reason that we are getting into a new facility it's obvious but I still want to kind of remind us is that because of the larger sanctuary extended parking lot the future private school more office space internship chapel and housing for interns as this building has become a place where we have grown we have seen God do great things for us building is a means to an end the end is the purpose and the call of God uh, there's so much activity that happens at hungry gen Monday through Friday and if you ever want to do just simply come in at any time and just look at what's happening here there's parking lot is full there's always somebody running around doing something this person praying this person sometimes you walk by the office somebody's screaming out somebody's saying who are you somebody is interviewing another student somebody's counseling somebody's praying somebody's just eating donuts um, somebody recording videos there's always an activity that is taking place we're impacting hundreds of students through this facility it literally is like a training ground it's like a home for a spiritual family it's a training ground for discipleship training ground for youth and a training ground for the next generation the board of trustees and you can go on our website and see who are the board of the trustees they're older men are overseers of the finances and the process of construction I do want to let you know that our church's finances are um, are uh, under oversight of the board of trustees and the eldership the construction project is not being done by the prophecy it's being done by the wisdom the counsel of people who know what they're doing in this area okay so, and I am not involved in it in the sense I'm just aware of it but there are people who know this very well and they are deeply involved which frees me to do just more of the ministry and make sure that we have the finances that's my number one job and so but that we have other people who are running this and doing this really well and I'm really grateful for that because building projects usually drain pastors like crazy um, because there's so much work that is involved in there the person that runs the project for construction is the person with the baby face which makes me honestly be very concerned about the future of our church now but actually that's the okay so I'm, 
I feel better now. <laughs> so, but Paul, Paul is the general, general contractor. For him, for Paul, this is not a job. It's like building a home for himself. And this is why I love the person, not only that runs it, but even the whole team. For us, this is not about building for the church. We treat it as we would build our own house. So we try to, honestly, Paul is doing his best to try to find best deals, but we also don't want cheap stuff that then the ceiling collapses on us. All right, so we want good stuff, but we want for a good price. So sometimes they would call and they would ask different um, companies, hey, what about, you know, could you give us a discount for Hungry Gen or this and that? They found really amazing already deals with brackets and so much stuff, leveraging their connections in the community for the sake of building God's house. And I'm super excited for that. Amen.